Welcome to Worship Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about overdrive and a little bit about distortion as well. As you can see in front of me, another board using the HX Stomp, this time the Stomp XL. And we have an array of drives. I'm going to walk through how I would dial in overdrives and that's a distortion. Overdrive and distortion uh, to get sort of different kinds of tones. And I want to say right off the top, we do a lot of stuff with modeling units here at Worship Tutorials. The principles that we're going to go over today will apply in the digital realm as well. Pretty much exactly the same. I also want to say a quick thank you uh, to uh, Creation and Fox Pedal. Uh, John has been very good to us. So Creation and Fox Pedal are all kind of under the same company umbrella. Creation provided this board and some of the cabling as well. Uh, I'll link below all the stuff that I'm using in this video. And I've got one, two, three, four, five different Fox Pedal pedals on here. Really killer pedals. I love the way these things sound. So this will kind of double as a demo of these things. Got the Revelation. Uh, reverb from Jet Pedals, awesome big huge, you know, Strymon-esque reverb from the from Junior over at Jet Pedals. The the Boss RV6, just because it's one of my all-time favorite pedals, RV5, RV6. This is a sort of acting as an always-on reverb. And then on the HX Stomp, I'm using a modified version of our 66 AC Top Boost patch that you can get, link below for that as well. Um, so I'm using running the amp and the IR in there, and then I've got some delay options, some modulation options in the uh, the Stomp XL. This is a, a homemade Telecaster Thin Line Tele Lambertones Blondies pickups in there, and this is my this is my clean tone. This is what it sounds like. We'll turn the compressor on because it needs to be on for this. It sounds like this. <laughs> So before we start talking about these drives, I want to talk about gain staging and clean tone. Because you've got to get that set right before you start adding overdrives. The way I like to run, the way we do stuff in our patches, I like to have the amp set so that when I play, when I dig in on the bridge pickup, it starts to break up a little bit. Let's talk about what I'm doing with this compressor because it's part of that gain staging thing. I like to use a compressor always on. I promise we'll get to drive very quickly. I like this pedal for multiple reasons. One, I've, you've got the ratio here, which is how much compression. So I've got it set pretty subtle. You can get a lot of squish out of it if you want. There's a blend knob to blend your clean tone in. And of course an output level. And then you've got attack and release, which is always nice to have attack and release on a compressor because it can change the feel of the compression. And then there's an EQ so you can make it brighter, which is always handy. Um, to have. So it's a great compressor uh, and I'll turn it on and off and show you what it's doing. First of all, I turned it off. Did you hear how the level just went whoop? So it's adding a lot of sustain. So it's giving me a lot of sustain. I'm not getting more level out of it, although I could if I increase the level knob. So it's not pushing the amp harder than when it's off. It's just evening things out really nice. And I think it adds a nice tonal character as well. So uh, anything that's like always on, uh, to, that's a gain staging type of thing, you want to get that set before you start digging into drive. So talking about these overdrives, we'll start here. The city is as you might expect with a green drive pedal, it's an 808 circuit with a boost. So this acts as two different things. It's got an 808 here, like a tube screamer, and it's got a boost here, which is just like a pure volume uh, or level boost, which is controllable by the green knob. Okay, the Kingdom is a Klon type circuit, so it's gonna sound a little different. The Wrath, uh, a rat type circuit. 
with a few different mods that they've done to it. Um, that's a distortion. And then the Vixen is a new thing from them. We did a demo of the Vixen. It's, uh, it can't, I like to use it in a lower gain type of a situation. It's like um, an amp type uh, drive because it uses a new um, chip that, that's kind of a newer design chip on the market that is supposed to react more like an actual tube in a tube amp. A lot of people like an always on type of a drive pedal where they can use it to tailor their rig to different guitars, different EQ kind of things, or just change the way the amp sounds, you can do that. But first of all, I want to use the 808 to talk about how uh, you can use the basically the three types of controls that you see on a drive pedal, what they do. So there is uh, drive, tone, and level. Now, as you can see, the way we like to set things up, the way I like to set things up, is drive is on the lower side of things, level is pushed. And what that will do is it will use the output level of the pedal to push the amp into overdrive. And so this concept works whether you're doing a modeling setup, whether you're running it into a real tube amp or a real, any kind of an amp that you have, it will, um, and it really makes a difference how you set your amp up. So the way we talked about that, that's why that gain staging section was so important. Because this amp is set so that it breaks up a little bit, when you hit it with just pure level, which I can do from the boost, it just makes the amp break up more. So you get overdrive that sounds like your amp. That's the idea with a boost pedal, and that's the idea with a drive where you set the gain lower and the level higher. It gives you more of the tonal characteristic of your amp. Now, with something like an 808, an 808 has its own sound, and that sound is a mid-push. It kind of sounds like this, although this is an exaggerated example, but the highs get cut off a little bit, the lows get cut off a little bit, and everything just pushes the middle of the frequency range. And you can really hear that. So it's just gonna push mids. That's why 808s are so great for helping your guitar just poke out in a mix because the magic is in the mid range. And when you push that mid range, you just stick out more. So I'm gonna play uh, with the, the settings as they are. And then I'm gonna change them up to show you how you can make it sound a diff you get more of the character of the pedal. So. Uh, again, right now we're at a lower drive and higher output setting, and we're getting more amp characteristics. <laughs> that sort of nasal quality of the uh, the overdrive of the 808. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the gain of the drive up. I'm gonna basically flip these knobs. So the level of drive that you're going to get is it might sound a little more saturated, but it should sound about the same drive wise, but it'll give you a different sound uh, because now you're going to hear more of the character of the pedal. <laughs> So I could really, I mean, you need to listen to this with, with decent headphones or monitoring. I could really hear when I, when I had it set with the drive up and the level back a little bit to compensate, I really heard this coming from the pedal. Like that's what a tube screamer sounds like. Um, and then when I pulled the drive back, pushed the level, I still heard, you know, the character of the tube screamer, but I heard a lot more of the amp fullness coming back in because again, when you push drive and not level, you get the character of the pedal. When you pull drive back and push the level to push your amp, you get the character more of the amp. So that is a big thing as far as like dialing in drives. Are you getting your drive, the character of the tone from the pedal? Or are you getting it from the amp by pushing it with level from the pedal? 
Okay, so the other control that's here that we haven't really talked about is this tone or EQ. And that's just gonna be set, it's gonna really depend on the guitar you're playing and the amp or device you're running into. Um, so I'm gonna sweep it around and you can hear, you know, as we go to the right, it gets brighter, as we go to the left, it gets darker. <laughs> Excuse my sloppy playing, but what I hope you heard is one, this pedal is very usable across that uh, spectrum. So in a lot of pedals, like if you go too far, it gets really harsh, really shrill. If you go too low, it gets really dull, really muddy. Uh, but this just gave different flavors of usability, in my opinion. So um, if you want a really bright tone, you can get it by going to the right. If you want a warmer, smoother type of a sound, I even went to the neck pickup to demonstrate it. Pull it to the left and you get like just this really warm, chewy type of thing. One thing I like to think about, so rule of thumb that I try to follow when I dial in EQ or tone on a pedal is, is my driven sound darker than my clean sound? Because <clears throat> what you don't want to have happen is you're playing clean and everything sounds nice and sparkly and present. And then you hit a drive and it's like, you hear more saturation, but where did your tone, like everything got darker? You'll kind of, you can get lost. Moving on, the Kingdom is a Klon type pedal. I have it set almost like the 808 uh, the, or the City. The only thing about it is Klons have a lot. Klon type circuits have a lot of output. So you can see the gain is set fairly low, but the level is less than, you know, 12 o'clock but it still gives me the same type of a thing. I'll play it for you so you can hear it. So as you can hear, you can use the the Kingdom or a Klon type pedal to really push your amp with a lot of level without using much gain. I'll play it again the way I've got it set and then I'll turn the gain up so you can hear like what does a Klon sound like? Again, higher gain settings, you get more of the character of the pedal, all right? <laughs> So again, I heard this kind of a thing coming in. It's like a, it's just a different frequency of mids that the 808 or the city type of pedals push. Different sound, they actually sound great when you stack them together. We'll talk about stacking uh, later. Let's move on to the Vixen. Again, you can hit the link below to see our full demo and review of this pedal. But I've got this on here because, like I said earlier, it's an example of a type of drive that I think a lot of people might use to um, have as an always on tone shaping pedal. So I'm gonna turn it on and play it, show you what it's doing. Again, here's the gain on it. It's set really low. Level is set so that it's pushing the amp a little, but not much. Uh, and then we've got bass, treble, and presence, plus this clipping option here. So we can really kind of shape the tone of our amp with this pedal. <laughs> So what I did in that example is I pulled the level back so that I wasn't actually introducing any more gain in, in the signal, maybe just a touch. But then I played with the EQ on here to give, I, may, I warmed the amp up. So if, if an amp is 
you know, if you plug into something and it's too bright, you can use a pedal like this to warm it up. I'll play it again, uh, not like big chords on the bridge pickup, just to show you what it's doing. <laughs> I mean, very different tone out of your amp or somewhat similar tone using a pedal like this. Um, but you can also use it as just another level of drive. All right, let's move on to the Wrath. This is the distortion and the distortion, a, a rat or a distortion, you're not going to use this type of a pedal, at least I wouldn't, as a very subtle, I, you probably could, as like a subtle light gain, like this is a big, huge sound. I'll play it, show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so maybe it doesn't quite get, you know, a Scorpions, is that Scorpions? I think that was Scorpions. Here I am, rock you like a hurricane. Okay, doesn't quite get scorpion sound, but <laughs> it gets the closer than I would get with any of the other uh, things. So a distortion, now there's a lot of information out there about what a distortion is versus what an overdrive is. A lot of it has to do with the, the clipping that it does, hard versus soft clipping. Uh, I just like to think a distortion is just gonna give you bigger, uh, more aggressive gain types of sounds. Even here, I've got the gain, so you got level, gain, I've got the gain set below noon, um, so I'm still using the level to push the amp, but you're definitely getting characteristics of this uh, Wrath pedal. Now, what I would use a distortion like this for, you might have some big rhythm parts where you're gonna want it. Um, I'll show you an example of that. <laughs> Okay, the other thing I would use it for is like lead or solo type stuff. Um, it works really well in that situation because it just fattens everything and it gives you lots of gain, sustain, uh, that kind of thing. So let me do like a bigger delay and I'll show you, you know, an example of that. That's a great tone for a lead. The you know you could stack pedals together to get that, and it's a, it's a different thing. I'll show you that. So I like to have a pedal like this sort of in the arsenal that just gets this big, huge sound with one button press. It's really cool to have. Now we can start talking about how can we stack them together to make nice sounds. And that's gonna lead us into a discussion about what order you put these things in as well. I like to stack drives, but I like to stack lower gain drives together. So that would mean basically these three pedals would, would do well stacking together. City, Kingdom, Vixen. And typically what I might do is stack the city with one or the other of these two. start experimenting with drives, you'll find that you have like some favorite combinations. This, 
this uh, city and the kingdom is a great combination, especially like if I had these two drives on this board, it would cover pretty much everything I need. But if you have room for, you know, a third drive, you can add something, a distortion like the Wrath or even like a Fuzz or something like a Kilt from JHS. Or I have on the other board that I've got, I have a Scarab from Basic Audio. It's just different, you know, versions of big, huge. Finally, let's talk about order. Now I used to put them in the order of gain low to high. So I would basically have this thing flipped. I'd go Vixen, Kingdom, City, Wrath. After watching that pedal show, Dan and Mick have taught me that you want to think about this in terms of headroom. Uh, I would run into this. What would happen is I've got my drive sound going. I've got a big gain sound and then I, 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 hit on one of the, like a boost, right? And it would be in front of my bigger gain drives and the boost wouldn't do anything. I would get a little bit more saturation, but no more level. And that was because I was basically out of headroom. And it's like, you can think of headroom as the top of, of how loud you can be. And if you're sitting right here with your big gain on and you hit a boost, it's just gonna, you know, you're not gonna get that much louder. Now, if you stack your higher headroom, lower gain pedals last, um, you have more headroom. So your headroom is up here. You can think of it this way. Your headroom is up here. Let me make sure I'm not off the top of the frame. And uh, here's your big gain sound. And now you've got like this much left to go. And so now you've got a boost or another gain stage after that's a higher headroom type of a pedal. You hit it and you'll lift up. This is also why um, it really depends on the amp that you're running this into or the amp model. If the amp is higher wattage, typically it's got bigger headroom. It's not always the case, but typically. And so you're gonna be able to push it further. The cleaner the amp is as well, the more you're gonna get level fluctuation. So the headroom you know, factors that you're running into are also the pedals, but also the amp model or the amp that you're running into. So now when I play the city, and I turn the Vixen on, I'll get a level jump, more so than if it was the other way around. So the same thing will happen with the Kingdom uh, paired with the City. keep saying this but man that is a what a sound these two pedals together I like I really like them with the distortion I have it here first um, it's it's gonna push this amp in uh, you know it, almost to its headroom limit I guess you could say so stacking a pedal with the wrath um, won't give you as pronounced of an effect as stacking it with the city so if you've ever wondered why that is it comes down to headroom. It comes down to how the amp is set and the available headroom you could think of it as in the pedals and where they are in the signal chain. So I'm gonna do the Wrath and then I'll add the Kingdom and the Vixen. The Wrath and the City together is just gonna be Mud City. Well, maybe we'll try it, see what happens. Here we go. <laughs> about order is whatever comes last like what the wrath with the city was a great example of this uh the city imparted its eq tonal characteristics on the wrath so you heard more of the sound of the city uh at when when i turned both of them on if these were flipped that would kind of not do the same thing you'd hear more of the sound of the wrath and the city would just push mids into it, but the wrath would give you the sound of the wrath, if that makes sense. Whatever's last sort of gives you its EQ tonal characteristics. Okay, finally, I wanna show you uh, what some of this stuff sounds like with some wet effects. So um, let's do this. I've got 
a preset on the Jet Revelation Reverb that is anti-shimmer. So uh, it's, it's a really, really cool thing that Junior has built into these pedals. By the way, Junior and his wife, they run this company, Revelation or Jet Pedals. They are, we, we've gotten to know them. They're friends. They are great, great people. Um, and their pedals are awesome. So we've done a full demo of the Rev Revelation Verb. Um, so check this out. This is anti-shimmer. It's an octave down shimmer. It's cool. <laughs> gain on just to show you like this big rhythm tone with a lot of reverb. Uh, I'm gonna stack it actually. There's a lot of gain into a lot of reverb and a lot of delay. Sounds, get my tempo, sounds like this. <laughs> Another big reverb and delay sound. I'm gonna get a dual delay going here. And this would be like the PNW lead type of a thing. So I'm gonna go Wrath, and then it's gonna hit the amp model in the stomp, and then it's gonna come out uh, through this dual delay, then through the hit the reverb in the effects loop, and then back out. Sounds like this. <laughs> This has been helpful for you when it comes to dialing in uh, drives. Another point is um, you don't have to spend $300 on an overdrive. You know, I've got over here on the counter, I've got a Joyo Vintage uh, drive. It's green, so guess what? It is. It's an 808, and it's like 40 bucks on Amazon, and they sound really good. Now, they don't give you all these awesome clipping options. You don't get the boost with it. It doesn't sound quite as good as this, in my opinion. It can be noisy more prone to breaking because it's not made with as high quality of components. But um, the point is you can get some really good sounding drives. An example of a clone type of a drive is the Electro Harmonics. I can't remember the name. I'll subtitle myself here. I used to own one for a while, uh, that, but it's EHX's clone type of a drive and it's well under $100, and they sound really, really cool. They get harsh when you turn them up gain-wise. We actually did a demo of one on the channel long ago. I think <laughs> maybe Nick did it. You can find these types of circuits out there uh, that don't cost a ton of money. And finally, just experiment. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, you, it's not easy, I understand, to go buy a whole bunch of pedals. That costs a lot of money. But if you have something like an HX Stomp or a Helix, you can very easily experiment with the pedals that are built in. And like I said earlier, these models, these digital models on these modeling units these days sound really, really close to the real thing. Using these units has informed me about what kinds of drives that I might like to own in real life, like a Timmy, for example, because most of them have one of those and they sound really good. They're getting really expensive. Um, so just experiment, and especially if you have a digital playground like this, it makes experimenting really easy. Hey, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for hanging with me in this probably really long video about overdrives, but 
Overdrives are fun. They're great. We like them. See you in the next one. Bye.